Hello and welcome to Mini PC episode show 85, Big Talk Small Computers. How are my frozen friends from the north? I'm thawing out. I'm sitting in front of my space heater right now. I'm thawing out from taking my dog outside. It is freezing. So do you know why most fires occur in residential homes? It's because of a hot-headed wife. No, just joking. Just joking. <laughs> yeah, space heater. Space heater. Yeah, it's because of heat other than the built-in system. Yeah, like when you use ad hoc heat. Um, I, I am such a government employee. I literally almost called out today just because it was too cold. <laughs> How many years are you in? 23, I believe. Ooh. So, uh, can we talk about the elephant in the room today? Are, are we good with that? Are we I had, dying? I, I, I was dying since last week because they sent me a uh, NDA only. I could not talk about it, and and I was good. I didn't even tell you guys, right? No, that was a good good kept secret. I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah. So Pine is at Fosdem 2019, which I guess is some sort of European tech conference. Door, you probably know more about that than I, right? Yeah, it's one of the, I don't want to say the biggest, but it is definitely one that's been going on for a while, and it definitely attracts a lot of people. So is it bigger or smaller than like CES in Vegas? Oh, well, it's hard to compare with CES. I will say if you compare it to like scale in California, it's probably about okay. that size. So, um, yeah, I, I was kind of sitting on this. Uh, they, they sent me a... PDF last week, and uh, they didn't have pictures, but the link that we're including uh, in the show notes on the forum pine, uh, pine64.org has pictures. So first item that I think is stink cool, Pinebook Pro. Um, looks like the old Pinebook, just black, right? Well, n no, because the original Pinebook, I will say, the keyboard was at best mediocre. The case was utterly plastic. Um, uh, it didn't feel, I would say, solid. This looks like it's much better built. Okay, well, it, it did say it was black magnesium, which I, I kind of, that, that sounds pretty exotic. I, I'm wondering if they're referring to the paint color or if that's actually the material. I thought I read it say it actually was a metal case. Yeah, I, uh, I thought I read the same thing as well. It says, uh, let me read. Pinebook Pro is meant to deliver solid day-to-day -day Linux or BSD experience to a compelling alternative. Oh, and to be a compelling alternative to mid-range Chromebooks that people convert into Linux laptops. In contrast, most mid-range Chromebooks, however, oh, and oh, I'm not reading this right. The Pinebook Pro comes with an IPS 1080p 14-inch LCD premium magnesium alloy shell, 64 slash 128 gig EMMC storage. And so the guys um, that like pre-ordered or are from the forum are getting the 128 for free, which is super nice. 10,000 milliamp battery capacity. Is, is that the same size as the last one, or, or is it bigger? Well, since I ripped mine to pieces because, you know, it was uh, damaged in a car accident, this was 10,000 milliamp as well, the old one. Okay, which that battery was good for a stink long time. I, I forget how long it was good for, but it, it was... Now, they're going to be upgrading the hardware, so it might consume power faster. Uh, but, all right, so modularity hackability, the only open source project can deliver so much as the unpopulated PCIe NV, or M2 NVMe slot, an optional feature that requires an additional adapter. The USB-C port on the Pinebook Pro, apart from being able to transmit data and charge the unit, which I'm pretty excited about, is capable of, oh my gosh, Digital video output, 4K at 60. They're really, they're really hitting all the marks. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. And I, I got a 
I got to pimp myself out. Go to flyingrich.com or my YouTube channel. I did do a video on all of this stuff coming out. Unfortunately, I didn't include the images. So you, you have to go to this post and take a look. Oh, oh, and before we jump off this, um, your old 14 inch pine book has an upgrade path. Oh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to start from the bottom on the stats. Target price is 199 199 bucks. All I all I could say is two things. I hope for this one, they have better speakers. Two, um, they have a backlit keyboard. I didn't see mention of backlighting though. I, I'm hoping. So this is supposed to contend with the a mid range Chromebook. Is that is that accurate? But that's what they're saying. I mean, I'm. I, right now, I'm broadcasting from my Acer 14-inch Chromebook that I paid like two something for. Decent enough device, no backlit keyboard, uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I'll no, say they're, they're not bad. Well, I'll say right now I have my Rock Pro 64 up and running as a um, third computer in my rig, and this is my portable computer. I've been taking to work back and forth. The slowest thing on it is my yeah. network speed when I'm at work because I'm tethered. Um, it is <laughs> unbelievably, unbelievably, remarkably, exceptionally desktop-like experience is what I'm going to say. Um, little doubt in my mind, this running Linux is better than a low-end Chromebook. I'm not going to, I don't want, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to say mid-range because here's the whole gimmick. With this device, your number one thing is you have to manage your expectations about what it's going to be like uh, th this is like a chromebook you cannot buy a chromebook and expect it to be a thousand dollar laptop this is only 200 dollars but i still i'm managing my expectations but i'm still expecting it to be a deal hell i'm tempted to try to buy two of them you know no, I, i'm just no. looking i'm sorry go no 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 go ahead I, I'm just looking at my Chromebook, and I don't have an SD card slot on my Chromebook, which I kind of miss. But uh, yeah, go, Brian, because I, I got a couple more. I want to go down the specs when you're done. I, I actually have a SD card in my Chromebook, and uh, I think it's the Acer something 11. Um, I got it a couple of years ago. It's the, uh, the yoga type one where you can fold it into uh, a tablet mode and so forth, so or, forth tent or mode. tent mode. Oh, so you got a touch screen. I, I, so that, that's two things I'd really like would be illuminated keyboard and, uh, you know, backlit keyboard and touch screen. Yes, the backlit keyboard does uh, add a little benefit, but that uh, unfortunately did not come with the uh, backlit keyboard. But to my point on this device that you're sharing with us, uh, the Pinebook Pro, it doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look bad. It looks pretty, uh, pretty decent. I would definitely put $200 down on this little device here. And um, I, I have to say, when I when I got my first Chromebook years ago, one of the, the first things I was reading was people, uh, were people uh, trying to hack the Chromebook and install Linux, which I did, and you can actually do, and it runs pretty good. I mean, it's not the best in the world, but it was, it was decent an alternative to, obviously, what you purchased it for was the Chrome, was the uh, Chrome OS, but, Something like this, this is like, hits that spot, you know? So with the Chromebook, the, the two things I don't do on my Chromebook, edit videos and SSH. That's the only two things. Otherwise, I absolutely walk around with my 14-inch Chromebook like Linus's blanket. I Everywhere I go in my house or wherever I am, I'm dragging it around. Yes. My MacBook Pro, my 15-inch MacBook Pro, I leave docked on my desk. But, so the, I'll read from top down on the specs. 14-inch 1080p IPS LCD panel, 64 or 128 gigabyte EMMC storage, black magnesium alloy body, so it's not just a paint job. SD card slot, digital video output via USB-C up to 4K 60 hertz, audio aux out slash UART, USB 3 and USB 2.0 ports, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, 4.2 Bluetooth, 4 gig LPDDR4 RAM, charging either via a barrel port or the USB-C, which I'm super psyched about USB-C. That, that's a big deal. 
So the real hardware, Rock Chip RK3399, big little hexacore, and that's the A72 slash A53. So I guess the uh, A53 is the little core. Uh, two megapixel uh, front-facing camera, microphone, speakers, slim and slick design with minimal branding, PCIe 4X, whoa, that can take an M2 NVMe SSD using an optional adapter. That's, that's a big deal. That, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, for anyone who did listen to this show for any length of time, I was really, really bullish on the RK3399 um, because I knew like six months ago it was put into the Chrome dev cycle as a piece of hardware. And I don't think we've still seen a shipped RK33 Chromebook yet, um, which shocks me. I'll just say that. Um, and my logic was if it's being put in a Chromebook, then there's little doubt this is going to be a better than normal processor. Um, uh, for the first two months I had this board, or at least a month, I was very, I don't want to say underwhelmed by the board, but I will say I had a really hard time getting stuff running on it. You could load Android and it would run just fine. You could run a Linux server, a headless server kind of thing, and it ran really good. But it was really no GUI that I could get that was run that would run stable whatsoever. Uh, then I finally stumbled upon Armbian build when they do make it a point to say in their posting that they have a good relationship with Armbian. Um, once I got this Armbian up and running on this board, I'm now I'm not going to install anything else on this until I absolutely have to, or there's something else that just looks that much better, but I can swear to everyone, this thing runs like a friggin' champ. This thing was, I believe 80 bucks. It's easily, in my opinion, when I see it running in a desktop, seems like 10 times as powerful as like a Raspberry Pi, uh, four gigs of Ram, uh, the uh, hexacore design works really great. The IO on this board is more than anything I will ever need is the logic. That's how uh, much I am bullish on this board right now. And it's all because of this chip, but it's really not the chip. It's the software on top of it. So there's little doubt in my mind, the software that's going to be on that laptop might not be pristine on day one, but there's little doubt it will very quickly become a very, very stable, usable platform. So the Pine Book that you're, I mean, the Rock 64 that you got, uh, Door, was the same Rock chip, RK3399? Yeah, the um, Rock Pro 64 has the exact same processor. And everyone who has one of these on YouTube, uh, whether it be e, um, e, ETA Prime, whether it be explaining computers or whether it be Mick, make Mac, Mick, muck, whatever. Um, they all utterly insist on the heat sink being really good. And this came with a heat sink. So I figured it's hard to get better than that. It's the one that they suggest put on it. Um, uh, the only thing I like to throw out there is it's still going to have the inherent limitation of you're not going to be able to run everything you can run on a normal laptop because it has to be specifically compiled four ARM processors, like there's no Chrome by default. I'm sure there's hacks and works around to get Chrome, but do not expect it to run nice. Do not expect it to run great. Do not expect to install Steam. Do not expect to install Left 4 Dead 2 or any stuff like that. So you're going to have a limited set of things you can run. And I'm sure if you try to run Blender or something, it's going to run really slow. But if you use it as like a productive computer to access email write emails do basic kind of task on it i'm feeling really really good about what the end user experience is going to be and this is only one of the pieces of hardware that they are unveiling yeah i'm i'm super excited about this oh you know a couple of things about the rock pro one i i did post in our google plus group i have a it has a let's see, a PCI Express slot, and I've got like a five-port USB 3 board on that, which just, I have it next to me at my desk, and I, I just like looking over at it. I just think that's crazy cool. 
the um, I, I'm running headless. Oh, so the my first go-to operating system, as always, is Diapi. If Diapi doesn't work, my second try is Armbian. Armbian is you know if if there's a Armbian distro out there for a device, it'll work, and, and that's the short of it. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll think for me it depends on the hardware. Sometimes with the hardware, the first choice is Diapi. Sometimes with the hardware, my first choice is Armbian. But I always try to use the suggested and provided operating system first, just because you know it's like if anybody should be able to make antivirus for a Windows box, it should be Microsoft. If anybody should be able to deliver a solid operating system, it should be the people supplying the hardware. Yeah, Dor, why don't you talk about the next device? Because this is kind of in your wheelhouse. Well, and I will say there is going to be more things on this um, uh, Pine Book Pro. It's 14 inches, the one that they're going to re release first. It is going to also have a um, webcam, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, AC, uh, four, um, four gigs of RAM, which uh, yeah, that's really good. Um, and it's going to have a built-in uh, microphone and speakers. And I really hope the speakers are better than what were in the first Pine book. But that's not a deal breaker. Even if there's no speakers in the laptop, I'll still be fine. And where are these guys located? Are they uh, in the U.S. or overseas? As far as I know, they're in Europe. But they're, they're sourcing everything, I, I believe, is getting shipped out of Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. I want to say they're in Belgium. But I cannot remember. Um, but yeah, that's only one device. And I'll say this intelligently, they listed that device first because that I think is a device that's going to get the most buzz. And I honestly think it's the device that people are going to be most satisfied with. But next, what they offer is a Pine Phone development kit. Now, we've heard a lot about um, LibraPhone. LibraPhone, the last time I looked at it, it was like 600 bucks. It's too much money. It's what I'm going to say. It's too much money. Uh, the idea of doing a open Android, which I believe Libraphone is doing an Android, is not a good solution as far as I'm concerned. Um, with this um, Pine phone, it's going to be running Linux. And I will say the dev kit is basically going to be powered by a AA battery. So it's not going to be something that you're going to walk around and look cool with unless I see you with it, then I'm going to think you're looking cool. Um, but I will say this, it, it has definitely less specs than your normal phone. For instance, uh, the Ram I want to say was, uh, only, oh, I think it was two, two gigs. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two two gigs of ram anybody with a modern phone should know two gigs on your modern platforms is not remotely close to enough for a really good experience on linux though it could be really good and i'm wrong this is not a double a battery joel, joel just let me because he's no no um um digital on Mattermost thought it was a double a it's not it is a 18650 which is actually a, a, de a decent battery i'll say that um uh, but this is literally just a dev device. But I will say this. If they offer a dev device that runs Linux and it's a phone and it's like 150 bucks, that's the dev price. Maybe it's going to be 200 bucks. It might be something I would at least entertain. But here's the gimmick. It doesn't matter what networks they say it can connect to, like 3G, 4G, 5G. It doesn't matter because every single place does it differently. So don't be shocked, people. If this device comes out and it will not run or connect with any mobile carrier in your state, it's definitely possible that will happen. It says the region supported by the LTE module, US, EU, and Asia. But, you know, again, everybody's 4G LTE is different. I mean, different carriers in the US. Yeah, different carriers, different spectrums uh all that even though it says us it literally might be only at&t and even though at&t offers i want to say it's five 4g bands and two lte bands they might only support one of those bands oh, now, okay. now now here's the gimmick my my phone is a huawei p um p um p20 light t mobile has four 4g 
LTE bands. My phone only connects to two of them. I, I'm not even sure I notice. Well, I think it depends on what's in your geographical area. If that works for you, that's good. If you're traveling around a lot, and that's, I hate to say it, that's why I've been with Verizon, because I've been doing a lot of traveling over the last years, last 10 years. And, uh, you know, Verizon and whatever their phone is, is usually taking good care of me. Yeah, I have to agree. I'm uh, the same way, actually, on the Verizon. I so only had um, Verizon fail to connect one time in one place, and that was when I was driving to OLF. And I didn't take the normal route with the toll. I went a different route where literally I thought the car was going to die going up the mountain. Then I thought I was going to die coming down the mountain because I was, it, it was just ridiculous, the speed. Um, and right at the very tippity top, no Verizon signal whatsoever, but T, um, T, um, T, um, the mobile was connecting at one X. So who would this phone be for door? What do you think? Well, here's the gimmick. This is not going to be a mass consumption device. The, 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 even if this thing gets launched, gets sold, supports hypothetically most carriers in the U.S., and it's only, le let's just say hypothetically, 150 bucks, and it's really sleek, and it's, it's still, no. This is going to be a niche device for basically somebody who wants to be like mobile hacking is the number one, a security person, a uh, security-minded fella might find a hell of a lot of use out of this thing. Other than that, just somebody who wants and desires and craves ultimate control of their mobile experience and does not like handing over information, stats, or, or root over to Google, Apple, Verizon, AT&T, or somebody else. It's somebody who really does crave complete and utter control of their digital well-being, I'll say. That would be a, I, I can see that's a very intricate niche within our society because I know there are a lot of people that uh, don't really care <laughs> about handing over their, that kind of data, but there are some individuals that do care but really don't know what to do about it. So I can see this filling in a, a, a void. Well, I'll tell you what pisses me off. Whether I care or not, here's the other thing is I hate the crapware, bloatware, that Verizon puts on my phone. I own my damn phone. I'm paying for it. I don't give a crap about the NFL or fill in the blank. I don't want your app. But I have, even if I don't care about my privacy, which I, I'm privacy aware, but, uh, you know, willing to give all my data to the Google anyhow. Uh, but yeah, if I want the bloatware off my damn phone... Uh, th this is this is kind of interesting. I'm definitely phone curious with them. Uh, what's the price on this? 150. Um, that's just yeah, the that's, dev. that's just the introductory price for the dev unit. Um, it, when it becomes full production, I would honestly expect it to be on the low end to 225. But for all I know, it might go even cheaper. I, I, I'm I'm just guessing. Um, and then the next one on their list is the Pine tab, unless you guys had anything else to say about the phone. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, the next one on the list, here's, here's how you know Pine is not a sponsor of Podnuts. I am really disappointed in this Pine tab. Oh, they came so close. They literally stood up to plate. They pointed out into left field. Somebody pitched a really slow pitch over the plate and they whack that ball really hard. And then it went foul. This is not a home run. Uh, and it's only because of the processor that they selected for this device. Okay. The pine tab is basically like a convertible, um, um, laptop. It is a laptop with a tablet you can remove. So you can basically, you know, like USS enterprise disconnect it which is a great thing to have in my logic the bezel on this thing literally looks like an inch and a half it looks humongous which i'm okay with i'm just pointing it out but um the processor in it is not the rk3399 which i honestly i can almost understand why they didn't because of heat dissipation it had to be a major concern but i don't care make the tablet 
literally three quarters of an inch thick. I'm fine with that. But the processor they put in this is a all is a all all all, all winner A64 SOC. I literally have no experience with that processor. And that's the thing. It could turn out to be fine. Great. But it also could turn out to be not very good is what I'm going to say. But it, it is going to start out at, at, at only 79 bucks on the low end, which to me is phenomenal. But I believe that's just the tablet. That's not the keyboard as well. Um, it has a 16 gig EMMC. Oh, and this is a Linux tablet, by the way, not an Android tablet. But you can probably install Android if you want. It's a Linux tablet with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 16 gig EMMC, two gigs of RAM. I really wish it had four. A seven a um seven twenty IPS screen, no four K, not even close to four K. Um, uh, ten USB, inch. How much does that matter? I I have no idea. Um, USB two dot uh, A, no USB three, no USB C. A M micro SD slot, which I'm actually okay with. Uh, two m- megapixel front facing camera, five megapixel real. A rear camera on a tablet is just the kind of thing I just want to punch him in the face about. That is just a complete waste of everything to put that on there. Um, then it says uh, speakers and a mic, volume rocker key, uh, the keyboard and trackpad, target price for the Pine Tab, keyboard uh, and the keyboard, 99 bucks for just the Pine Tab, 79 bucks. Now, here's the gimmick. Even if it's moderately dud-like, even if it only fizzes, it's still not bad for 79 bucks. I will say, I will that. say that. Oh, not at all. And the, the keyboard is magnetic, kind of like the uh, Surface, you know, the, the Microsoft Surface, uh, which is very cool. 99 bucks. I, I would take my money. Just take my money. I don't know, guys. Really? 99 bucks for this thing? Yeah, yeah. You know what? They're doing cool stuff. They come out with this. I'm buying it. Well, I've spent more for less, is, is what I'll say. I've made I've much made worse, decisions worse decisions in my life. In my life. The pine top? Not pie top, pie top. Oh, the pie top. What that was that, 329? The pie top. Was it? it? It was too much. Um, But here's the real question, Rich. Um, I listen to tilts, and I don't know why, but I do. Uh, Dan, uh, I agree with Dan, my best tablet mobile experience i've ever had and i've literally had now probably 18 tablets total has been the jide remix ultra tablet uh best keyboard experience longest battery really good screen blah 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 this is a portable tablet with a d with a um tablet you can take off of the keyboard the keyboard is a full keyboard the keyboard has r- real escape key on it and you'll be able to run Linux on it. I'm going to guess when this thing comes out, Dan, double N Dan on tilts is going to literally like rave over this thing. I don't see a battery spec on it, but uh, yeah, I would, uh, that, that's one of those things. Uh, in my list, there's three items here. I definitely want the, uh, the, the pine book pro, uh, this tablet is on my list, and one of the later items. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, um, here's the gimmick about. I'm, I'm honestly not stressed about the battery whatsoever because with each step down in resolution, you gain exponential battery life. So even though this thing is only 720p, what that tells me is this thing could literally have a battery that could last 20 hours. It probably won't. They're probably turn tune the battery down in size. So you get probably six or eight hours of battery life. If I could get more than eight hours of battery life out of an $80 tablet, I would literally buy like two of them just because I want to support them so much. I would definitely get the Pinebook Pro hands down without a doubt. That is a very sexy machine uh, for the price they're offering for they're asking for. And uh, for what it can do, <clears throat> I think that's a really no-brainer. Um, the this tablet that you're talking about with the uh, the huge bezel, looking at that, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of uh, in a in a conference room where you see the little tablet outside on the wall mounted. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> everybody know who's in the meeting? What meeting? Got the next room next. 
Yeah, that's that reminds me of. You can uh, definitely get one of these and hang them up all over the house. <laughs> well, and you see, Brian, you don't know how accurate you actually are because he, here's one of the things. Even if I buy this thing and even if it isn't great for being a multimedia consumption or creation device, it would probably be a perfect device to hang by my front door as a touchscreen device permanently plugged into the wall and just have it do updates and m monitoring because there's a built-in camera and uh, communications and like a Trello, like bulletin board, post-it note board, digital for like the um, family. Amen, brother. That's that I, I can't see any other use other than that. That's a, uh, that's a perfect use case. And I think they probably could have saved a little extra money uh, by taking out some things in this, um, like the uh, 4G LTE, uh, is that? Yeah, uh, this doesn't have mobile in it. Okay, I thought it did. I'm looking at the wrong. Thing. No, you're yeah. Just but they could have got rid of that rear camera. I can tell you that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so that's the third device in the list. But wait, there's more, still more. Um, next is the. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Rochambeau? Sure. Rochambeau Retro Gaming Case and Add-on Accessories. So it, it, it looks like it's a case. I don't, I didn't look and see if it had a computer in it yet, but it looks like it's just a case. But they even admit in the posting this is a super Famicom-inspired case. This thing to me looks a hell of a lot like a European super nintendo entertainment system it looks so much like a one it wouldn't shock me if nintendo would send them a cease and desist yeah it's very nintendo-esque okay so it's a case and what you put in it is a rock 64 or a rock pro 64 it says and raspberry pi compatibility Wow. Okay. Target price for the case, 29 bucks. That's okay. I don't think they could have done a case, honestly, for less than 15 bucks or so. So it's 30. It ain't horrible. Price for the controller, 12 bucks. For a $13 controller, I expect that controller to be junk. I'm just going to say that because I've bought a lot of controllers for my um, mini PC gaming experiences, and it's hard to get a good controller for less than 30 bucks. If it is a good controller and it's only 13 bucks, I'll buy like 10 of them. And here's the thing, the cartridge, the cartridge in it is actually functional. That's the part I love. You can literally put SSDs kind of in the cartridge and you could say, this is my Super Nintendo cartridge. This is my Sega Genesis cartridge. This is my TurboGrafx-16 cartridge. That little touch is the kind of thing that like sends shivers up my spine that will let me actually use the device as a gaming console and not just have it sitting there with a stupid blinking light. Yeah, that, that looks, that is really cool. I, I definitely enjoy that. So it says 128 gig, 24 99, 256 gig, 39 99. So absolutely cool. Yeah, that price is uh, is not bad at all for what you're paying. What are you getting? Yeah, and I have one Rock Pro, uh, Rock Pro 64. I'm not putting that in there. Not, no. I have a Rock 64, which is my next cloud host. We've been now running it for, I want to say, about two weeks. Zero issues, zero downtimes, uh, updates through the normal user web UI has not been 100% successful, but when it's not, I literally just wait till I come home and I can either SSH in or I can access the admin NCP uh, uh, um, uh, portal on port 4443 in the web interface. And if I do updates and upgrades through either of those ways, SSH or that web interface, the admin interface works every time smooth as frigging butter. That's what I'm going to say. Um, and it's been running really great, but I do have a second Rock 64 sitting over here, but here's the gimmick. I'm going to try to put a combination of Plex and NextCloud on that box and see if I can make that my remote um, syncing server and give it to a friend down the street um, 
so I can easily share files back and forth with him. He can easily share files back and forth with me, and we can back up each other's instances kind of thing. Um, so then I won't have a device to put inside of it, which means I've just got to buy another mini computer. Go figure. Uh, are you saying a Rock 64, not a Rock Pro? I have two Rock 64s. One's running the next cloud. One's sitting around right now doing nothing. The Rock Pro is going to continue to be my mobile back and forth from work computer until the Pine Pro comes out. Very cool. Now, it, you didn't read the last uh, paragraph on the bottom. It says, we have plans to further explore the retro gaming market in 2019, and we will be making more announcements down the line. The Rochambeau case is the first step in what we hope to be a long-term endeavor. That That is very cool. Yeah. No, I, what, I'm curious. What, yeah, what, 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 what else can you do? I don't know. RGB, baby. RGB. That's all I got to say. <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only joking. My son loves RGB. That's the only reason why I bring it up. RGB is, uh, you mean the um, um, podcast and the YouTube guy? No, 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 no. The, uh, the lights, the red, green. Oh. Yeah. The LED flashing lights all over the thing. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Um, because there's a a guy who does a podcast and a YouTube channel. I believe it's just called RGB, where he is like, he is the hardcore nerd who will point out any thing that's not perfect about a retro gaming experience. Because literally, there is a RGB way to display video games which gives it the most pristine and the least amount of video lag of possible that's why i think you were talking about oh my gosh I, that's going way okay. above and beyond and over the top i thought these things are supposed to allow you to have some fun and build some nostalgia you know i mean i guess you can go over the top if you want but i don't know that just sucks all the fun out of it sometimes <laughs> Yeah, don't get me wrong. He's and he admits he he goes overboard. But he, he said when he just plays, he's not as picky. But he has to try to push stuff to the limits. And 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 here's the other thing: the case literally is going to have a genuine power and reset button. Now here's the gimmick: eighty plus percent of all the mini PC retro cases I've ever seen do not have functional buttons, and the some of them that do don't do it right. Is what I'm gonna say. They say right in their uh, little statement here the power and reset switches on the case are are um are functional and with help of a script also safe for shutdown so that's the gimmick and that's the only one i've ever seen do it right is when they literally provide you with a shell script to interface with the with the um pins so it knows when this pin gets this message run this script and that's the only way you can safely shut these things down um and i do believe that the um cartridge itself is using a standard sata connector that's just i mean listen man the this okay raspberry pi has nothing to worry about raspberry pi is technically being backed by a multi-billion dollar company called broadcom okay let's not hide anything they're doing it as almost as a hobbyist thing. The people still work for Broadcom, okay? They're doing it as a hobbyist endeavor, which is fantastic PR for Broadcom. These guys are doing it out of pure passion, okay? If I'm a football coach and I'm going to a superb football game, I don't want a player who's in it for the money. I want a player who's in it because they love the game, because they will do anything and everything to make sure that they're doing right by the team and not for themselves. This company is now, in my humble opinion, beginning to be poised to be the preeminent, the premier mini PC manufacturer in the world. And I honestly can see in a year from now when people are talking about doing mini PC type things. Raspberry Pi might become an afterthought. Well, those are some uh, heavy words there. Very bold words. I, I have to agree with you that uh, Broadcom is definitely a huge chip manufacturer. I mean, if anyone in an elect in <clears throat> electronic business um, 
knows Broadcom. It's a well-known name like Cisco in the networking world. Um, and I have to agree with you, Dor. I 100% have to agree with you as far as the passion. Because when you're looking at these products compared to what Raspberry Pi, what the Raspberry Pi Foundation is offering, night and day difference. You can clearly see um, where the direction is going. Um, I, I hope you're right. I really hope I really you're right. Hope so I, I do have a video kind of throwing Raspberry Pi under the bus that I'll probably release in a day or two. Um, I just got to do some finishing touches on it. But it, it's talking about the Raspberry Pi, and, and sorry to segue into this kind of inartfully, they uh, came out with a 3-plus compute chip or a compute board, a compute module. That's it, sorry. And realistically, it's a loser. It's a loser all the way around, and just to tease the crap out of it, just look for flyingrich.com uh, for the video to drop, which will probably be in a day or two. Or pro unless Dor shoots this out the door tonight, maybe when you hear this, it'll be available. I don't know. What I'll say is um, it's almost like the compute module. I think of the compute module for the Raspberry Pi. It's almost like two vegans standing around arguing who has the best hamburger um honestly i think that we're just not the audience for it i think somebody has to be the audience for it but i don't know who is the audience for it there were two or three kickstarters in the past where they were trying to offer a really high-end shiny looking uh set-top box type experiences where it had a raspberry pi compute module in it because there were things on the native board that they just didn't need. And the compute module was really all they needed. So maybe it's more of a manufacturing industrial thing. I don't know, but I don't see any, when I look at that compute module, I, I just think what in the hell would I even begin to use that for? And I'll, and I'll, I, and I, and I gotta say this, no matter what, what, if, 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 if this time next year, everything we do in mini computers is with Odroid, Orange Pie, and Pine, I will literally set up a reoccurring donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation because they're still doing the right thing as far as the entire world is concerned. Pine is doing what's right for the first world. I got no problem saying that out loud. And what Raspberry Pi has done and are doing, what people surrounding them are have done and are doing is the best kind of work I could ever imagine people doing. It's just, I'm having less and less of a use case to financially directly support them and get their products. Yes. The raspberry Pi uh, foundation would not be what it is without the community that supports it. I mean, every, you can clearly see that um, <clears throat> as far as the, uh, the compute module, I was looking at that too, and I was scratching my head. I'm like, how am I going to use that? What would I use that for? And I was thinking the same thing as you, Dor. That has to be some type of industrial application. Uh, and for those who for those don't know what this looks like, it looks like a, a memory stick, like a stick of RAM that you'd put in your laptop. It's, or something. it's a DDR4 pin factor, I believe. Yes. But um, so I'm wondering if it's for applications where you you where you need um, a high count number of cores and you're not really uh, keen on downtime you know something where you where you, where you have a, a number of systems clustered together where uh, resources and downtime is, uh, is something that you're focused on yeah I do think it could have a cluster task to it or some kind of bale of cluster thing where it could be useful or functional. I, I, I don't know. Anyhow, I got a video discussing all of that and uh, I, I would really scratch way deep into it but uh, you guys seen the spreadsheet. I, at least I sent you the invite. But yeah, I, I'm still, it's a head scratcher to me as to the use case, uh, the practical use case for this. Well, I know, but there's still more about the pine stuff. That that that's the thing. But wait, there's still even more. 
This is a sign of passion and dedication. They're not just coming out with a Pine Book Pro. They're not just coming out with a Pine Phone. They're not just coming out with a Pine Tab. They're not just coming out with a <laughs> gaming console thing. They're also coming out with what they're calling the um the um the Cube open source IP camera. And by the looks of this thing, this thing looks smaller than the uh, Israeli solid cube uh, mini computer that I had. It looks like it may, might be an inch and a half by an inch and a half by an inch and a half kind of thing. Um, um. You know, now that you mention it, I'm looking at the SCR, I, or is it, what is it, CDS cell. I'm looking at the CDS cell and the LEDs. Those are huge. There's a microphone on there, and it looks like there's a speaker on top. Uh, looks like three buttons on the bottom, also. Uh, so the this is almost exactly what I want, and because I've been talking a lot about doing, uh, I don't want motion detect. I want to do person detection and facial recognition for you know video security. And I don't know that this is going to have the hardware to do it, but I I definitely want one of these to give it a try, see how it goes. Well, I'll just say this. I This is just, when I got down to this, I just looked at the physical, and then I just stopped looking at it. I, okay, 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 okay. I do not ha I, some people call me paranoid. I'm not. My name is George Door Geek. Oh, I'm not paranoid. Um. I don't have a Google Home in my house. I do not have an Amazon Alexa in my house. Um, I literally disconnected my security system because I don't trust the company that was connected to it. Oh, wait, did I say that loud? I don't have my alarm system set up because I didn't have the money. That's what we're sticking with. Um, I don't want something in my house where I do not have the availability to have root. And it's only because, and this is going to harken back to a, Milton Friedman quote, and if you don't know who Milton Friedman is, he was a e um e um e um economist who won a Nobel Prize. All of five foot two, he uh, uh learned at the writings of of Adam Smith, who was a well known Scottish uh guy who basically set economists into the world. They did exist before him. He considered himself a uh, social philosopher kind of thing. Um. And nobody takes care of you better than you, okay? No one spends somebody else's money as carefully as they spend their own money is his line. But I take it and I use it in Linux and personal freedom. And I say, no one is going to maintain the software on a device better than me. Uh, Ring will not... Uh, Amazon will not, Google will not, Apple will not. Nobody will maintain that code and be more thoughtful and more caring about it and worry about it more than me. Um, so this I can see getting. Oh, I, I, I can see getting a couple of these. Not only can I see getting a couple of these, and I haven't looked at the price yet, I could see putting these in cases and selling these as personal, locked down, off of the internet, security because i don't know if you heard about this one guys a family was watching the nfc championship game in california where all of a sudden they were sitting there watching the game and they heard a um uh e um e um e um emergency broadcast signal they weren't sure where it was coming from they, they thought it must be the tv and then it warned them of a nuclear attack coming from Korea and you have less than five minutes to evacuate the city or something like that. And then they looked at the TV and they noticed the town that they were in was hosting the game, yet they're still playing the game. So something's not right here. Somebody basically hacked their nest, I believe it was, camera, and they announced to them that the world is ending. Okay. If I have this device in my house, no one is doing that to me. Okay. I have not been fished. I have not been, uh, I haven't had a virus on any device I own since I went to Linux. Um, and with this, I don't have to worry about getting a false nuclear alarm saying that rocket man or whatever is coming to kill me. Um, so here's the gimmick. Okay. 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 Now that I've done that, 
Uh, it has a dedicated SL3 Cortex A7 processor that is similar to what would be in a Android tablet like four years ago. So it's not a powerful processor. Uh, 64 meg DDR2, you don't need a lot of RAM with this kind of thing. 128 meg flash, you're just going to flash a basic operating system on it. A micro SD slot, a Sony CMOS camera with an MIPI interface. I have no idea what that is. A physical uh, NIC 10 100 not gig, which is also, again, fine. Uh, 802.11bgn, Bluetooth, USB 2.0, 32-pin GPIO, passive power over Ethernet. That is really smart. Uh, interchangeable M12 lens type, so you can do wide, fisheye, or zoom. Target price, 20 friggin' dollars. I could see buying 10 of these friggin' things is what I'm going to say, okay? And, of Amen. course... They also say that you can print your own 3D case, which, oh, yeah, you bet your ass I will. Amen, Dor. I, I could see buying 20 of, the, uh, uh, 20 of these things as well. Well, and then here's, here is my logic, Rich. I, my logic is I'm, I'm a fan of uh, centralized computing in my own environment kind of thing. Um, my logic is I would rather think I would want to be able to do all my facial recognition and all the hard processing on a centralized computer and just have the camera just basically be like a long USB cable, if you will, back to that Mm -hmm. central computer. computer. Yeah. I mean, ideally that's how it goes and, and you probably need more horsepower for it. I was following um, somebody's YouTube channel, and they they had a process for doing it like a week or so ago, and I was not successful in getting the facial recognition to work uh, following their recipe. But yeah, you you do need a bit of horsepower. Well, and the only thing that worries me, and here's the thing: for twenty bucks, I don't expect to have like a Canon Rebel type experience okay uh, i'm i'm stupid but i'm not quite that stupid um but it says if i read it right an eight megapixel camera eight mpx i believe is what that stands for so i have no idea what to expect when i hear eight megapixel but i know it doesn't sound great or grand is what i want to say and here's the thing i really don't need it to be great and grand i need it a to be stable as hell I need it to keep running. I don't need it to random reboot. I don't need it to randomly lock up. I just need it to be stable as hell and consistent. Whatever that picture looks like on day one is when I need that thing to look like for a year or whatever. So for 20 bucks, I can't see not buying one of these damn things. Now you oh, can so Dora, what are we going to... Uh, I'm sorry. What are we going to talk about now? I mean, I'm sure there's not two more devices left, right? I stopped scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> Before we do that, I was going to say you can get a decent image with uh, eight megapixels. It's the the actual lens that gives you the 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 quality of the picture and the image sensor itself. So I wouldn't knock that too hard if you're seeing the eight megapixel. Well, it's a Sony CMOS, so that that's a brand name. So that that's a good thing. Gotcha, and it and it also does say it is capable of running mainline Linux kernel starting with 420 because why not 420 but and and here's a little dirty secret from everything i know which is nothing if you can run mainline linux kernel that makes everything much easier it makes the ability for anybody to download any distribution fedora red hat slackware ubuntu debian keep going keep going and you can just and all of them and you can get it to work on this damn thing that is when you can really see something shine so that really does make me giddy and it also says that they do have a dev version of motion os which is the latest the hippest the most recent um motion tracking webcam interfacing os that it, as of late This seems like a winner. I, I, when is it launching? I, di- I did not see a date or a time span for this one. Take my money. Okay, so apparently there is still more. Okay, there's the Pine 
H64 Model B. Now, this is where I start to not be completely aware because I have a Pine 64. I have a Pine 64 Plus. They came out with something else after that that I did not get. And I think this is the predecessor to that board. This board looks like it's... I, it looks like it's the size of a Raspberry Pi, is what I'm going to say. Because most of the time, the pine boards were bigger. They were much bigger. So it looks like it's about the size of a Raspberry Pi. It does have uh, USB 2, one USB 3, uh, 128 uh, flash, micro SD slot, uh, real-time clock battery connector, onboard blue, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, two 20 pin GPIO header doesn't say Raspberry Pi compatible digital video out digital video out. So it's not HDMI out 3.5 stereo, uh, gigabit Nick, uh, EMMC socket and a IR sensor as well. Uh, the variants, uh, one gig for 25 bucks, two gigs for 35 bucks, three gigs for 45 bucks. So that I don't know. Um, I'm not sure when I would need this board or why I would need this board. I honestly do not know about the uh, processor either, but more choice is better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the fact that it has a real-time clock on the board built in uh, makes it all all the difference depending on what your uh, your, your use case is for. Yeah, yeah, this, this is the kind of thing I'm going to keep my eye on and I'm going to keep looking for people using this and hearing what people think about it. Honestly, the price isn't bad. The price isn't fantastic. It, to me, it's a very fair price. And the last for, last item? Crikey, there's still more. Okay, Rock 64 Revision 3. Rock 64 is the most popular and successful board we've created, and I understand why. Okay, I'll say that. Um, the number of OSs that it supports and the number of projects that have been undertaken using it has exceeded their expectations from genome sequencing uh, IOTA nodes home NAS servers, retro gaming consoles, little board has proven industry uh, application. So in 2019, they'll be updating the rock 64 with, oh my power over ethernet. Nice real time clock. I do believe um, I had to connect. No, I have to. Yeah. It doesn't have one of the very improved GPI two compatibility support for high speed us. Okay. There's now, there's now like a gap between what a lot of micro SD cards, uh, readers and the rock 64 is like in the mid range. So they're going to upgrade the U S um, 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 speeds for the micro SD cards to where I'm going to expect it's going to be able to do upwards of, I want to say two gigs a second, I believe is the next step up. Um, various minor improvements. My guess is just more stability, better you know, um, hardware involved, better testing with it involved and pricing remains the same across board versions. I will I say will. the rock 64 has been among the better bang for the buck boards I've ever bought. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the price, the current price is, uh, one gig, 24, 95, two gig, 34, 95, four gig, 44, 95. And I actually run Docker containers on mine and, uh, just, just for the heck of it. And it runs fine. Yeah. Uh, mine until I turned off uh, the Firefox uh, script debugger prompt uh, ran solid as a rock. Once I did that and I disabled that debugger from prompting me, do you want to continue or stop? That's when I started experiencing uh, freezes on the hardware. Um, I'm uh, sure if I did an Armbian update, I wouldn't have seen that anymore, but I just ran out of patience. See that—that's the difference between you and I. I don't think I run a single ARM device uh, with a head on it. They're all headless. Yeah, mine are pretty much too as well. 
Okay, we so we literally d- just for an hour talked about nothing but the pine announcement. That's how you do an announcement. I'm going to tell you right now. If you're doing a company and you want to make an a um splash try to do more than just one thing at a time and that's where you need a team that's where you need management that's where you need delegation and that's where you need cooperation so obviously i'll say this the people who are behind pine are not just one or two people the people that are behind pine is literally a bunch of people all with the same drive all with the same goal all with the same thing that they're shooting for and even if half of these uh you know just don't work out well or they can't keep enough in stock or something it's still going to be a successful launch i know about might be 10 months ago might might be close to a year ago they were crazy busy and this is what they must have been up to okay well just I'll say this, just for spite, there is one more thing I am going to bring to the show. Okay, line 814 in the notes. We already once in this show mentioned and laughed at and insulted the pie top because it was a $300 shell with a bad keyboard, not good trackpad, um wasn't designed exactly great was definitely a little bit more complex i think than it needed to be to put together and then just i couldn't get any other board to work on it correctly without having a very weird graphical glitch on it okay so he made fun of pie top that's how you also know we're not being paid by pie top but now since i insulted them uh what th- what they're coming up with now is called the pie top four Okay, uh, Pi Top 4 is not a laptop, is what I'm going to say. Uh, this device, to be honest, is a little bit difficult for me to completely talk about because it looks like it's nothing more than a fancier case for a Raspberry Pi with a couple buttons built, into, built into, it. into it. I don't get it. No, it's very, very confusing. Um, it's larger than uh, a woman's hand, I would say. If you were a basketball player, you might be able to palm this thing. That's how large it is. And uh not really understand the use case for it. <laughs> is it a doorbell? Is it uh, a recorder I, for a meeting? For- so the the unfortunate thing is the first image shows it on, and I don't know if this is like a Lego type. Uh, what are the Lego ones that you make robots out of? Connect. Connect. Oh. Anyhow, there there's all sorts of Lego things you can make robots out of, and the first image they show is this pie top on a track device. I'm like, oh my gosh, they, they got like some sort of mobile robot type thing. I, I'm like, uh, where, where do I buy it? I'm like, yeah, no, that's not it. Yeah, so it's like an enclosure. To me, it looks like it's trying to be the beginning of a project. It's going to get you uh, to step three of a project faster is, is the only way I can say it. Now, it does have buttons on it, does have a power button, and one of the pictures they do show, it, it literally shows it like a doorbell kind of thing. Um, it's the kind of thing, it's almost cornering itself into being only for these specific types of projects, and it will get you at least to step three out of step 10 quicker, but I'm not sure they could not have timed a release announcement. The worst, at least in my mind, than this. Uh, it literally was announced, I want to say, two days before um, the uh, Pine announcement. So this looks like it might be something that could be useful, and it looks like it has like um, maybe even a speaker uh, built Looks into it as well. like it may have an e-ink display on it or, or something or, or some like Gen 1 cell phone display. Yeah, I think uh, I, I'm sorry. I think this is a loser. 
I really do. <laughs> Even if they're trying to uh, make it easier for the maker that, you know, the learning community, it's it's too complicated. Worse than the the, the Gillette commercial? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm really happy I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, The only thing I could see this maybe using is maybe you could get this to help a child do a project. Maybe this could help them. Help. Or something? No, I, I, there's better systems than this. But yeah, way better systems than than uh, using something like this. Yeah. So, what's in the box? It comes with a Raspberry Pi, 16 gig SD card, 16 gig SD card. What's that? Like two dollars? Um, a power pack, a multi tour tool, and a foundation kit. I literally, I literally have no idea, have no what, idea the what the hell they mean by multi-tool, multi-tool. or foundation kit. Yeah. Well, a multi-tool, it could be the cheapest Chinese knockoff multi-tool on the planet. And the foundation kit, they in text, tell you it comes with sensors, motors, buzzers, and LEDs. Create oh, okay. anything. Right. Well, it tells you right here, guys. You can create anything. They wouldn't lie to us. <laughs> So I can create AI. There you go. Hey, Dor, make sure you, you give them the mini PC address to send the nasty gram to. Ah, uh, well, yeah. And look, no company's perfect. I just went over how the Pine people, they've had duds. Everybody's had duds. Sure, Nobody's for sure. Perfect. But these guys, they need to, like, in my humble opinion, I think the Pie top people need to do some kind of reset or refocus or re-engage or something. It's absolutely. It's simple. It's simple. And then and the Pine 64 group displays the simplicity of what I'm about to say. They listen. They listen to what people are saying and they're actually doing what people have said. Very kind of contrary to what the Raspberry Pi Foundation is doing. Um, I'm not too sure if they're listening all that well to the community and the pie top. I don't know where that's coming from, um, but I'm sure it'll fill some void somewhere. But uh, the Pine 64 seems to be hitting every single thing that we've all wanted from a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and I, I echo everything you said in just... As much as I'll throw Raspberry Pi under the bus, I got to commend them because they are the shoulders that all of these other companies are standing upon. And if they never do anything again, they've been an unbelievable success. Right. And that's because of the community, though. I mean, I honestly think the community is is driving that bus. Well, it, and when you think about it, there, there have been so many products before that I've, you know, uh, been a user of. So, like... Pick microcontrollers, basic stamps, those propeller chips, uh, so many things that just didn't quite get beyond, you know, the really geeky solder up your own ham radio guy. So kudos, kudos to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Well, and I'll just say this really quick. The one thing I notice is what I'm going to say. Eh, I don't know. It might just be a confirmation bias. I don't know. Um, anybody who says like anybody who uses a board that sounds like a raspberry pi or anybody that says in their marketing material because you know most of the sites when the first time they publish something about a new board they're just publishing what the company's telling them to pu- publish and they say stuff like raspberry pi killer the next raspberry pi will this defeat the raspberry pi i never once remember pine or odroid people even comparing themselves to Raspberry Pi, they've almost pulled an apple in that sense where they don't even mention the competition. And honestly, I don't think they need to. Um, I think the people who want a Raspberry Pi are going to go get a damn Raspberry Pi. And the people that know don't need to be told if it's better than or it looks like or it can dethrone. All you got to do is tell people what you have to offer and let them decide for themselves if they're going to support you or not. Isn't, isn't the uh, the founder from Apple? Wasn't he uh, an Apple employee? Uh, the rat who who? 
the Raspberry Pi guys? I uh, know from uh, Pine sixty four. I honestly don't know. I remember seeing a video uh, when you when you first showed me their first board, and I think uh, he was ex- explaining that he was from Apple. I could be wrong. I honestly don't know. I, I honestly cannot remember. I will say we literally have like sixty other links in our notes. But it didn't matter. Once this pine thing came out, we all stopped adding links. <laughs> I do have a question, though. Um, if you guys have anything else to uh, bring up. Go for it. So these past few weeks, ever since uh, Christmas, when my son built, well, I, I bought my son a uh, gaming pc for christmas we ended up building it together i had a really good time with them i said you know what i haven't really had a high-end system myself in a long long time so i ended up scrounging some cash together and building myself a high-end system and uh as i'm poking around the shop and i'm looking at some old pcs that are kicking around and i'm wondering yeah i know this is a mini pc show we talk about mini pcs extensively and primarily exclusively but when we're looking at uh mini pcs as far as uh like itx boards and micro atx boards and mini atx boards they could be um shrunk down to a size of a a a mini pc as well too with a little bit a little bit more processing power my question is um since we've seen these smaller devices in our, in our living rooms now. Um, do you think that the HTPC or the home theater PC is dead and buried or is it still kicking and alive? What are your thoughts? Are your thoughts? I, it's, I remember when HTPC was all the rage and people were trying to find the smallest case to shove a, you know, ITX board into, but with things like, uh commodity things like you know a roku which is my primary device or fire stick or google chromecast uh being sub you know sub hundred dollars and many of them on sale you know sub forty dollars why why would you even want to start throwing it realistically in htpc you're probably going to be in the 800 dollars range easy i'll say the only reason I say it's not going to die is because technology never dies. It's still going to have a use case because everybody wants something different out of their laid back experience in front of a TV. Some people only want to stream premier league soccer games and that's it. And that's not easy to do on a Roku unless you pay a lot of money. I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's a matter of dare I say almost convenience or simplicity or what they're comfortable with. Um, I, I'll say um, I, I'm starting to favor a laptop over a full-blown HTPC form factor. And it's only because a laptop by its very nature is thinner and more discreet, um, but it doesn't have the power. Uh, if your goal is to do PC games on television, you don't have a choice. You have to go either NVIDIA Shield, and then you only get a select type of game or you can try to do like the stream link or steam link or your raspberry pi stream link or whatever but if you really want game full gaming experience on a tv you have no choice you have to go htpc and i will say this the flexibility you get with the htpc is difficult to compete with no matter the what the form factor or the or the device um so i can definitely still see enough people buying that to where it's going to be out there and people are still going to be using them. Um, I've had lots of fun with using arm devices as my HTPC, but when my son wants to play a game on steam, uh, I'm just going to hook the laptop up to it. If I had a PC up there, I could put by the television. That was like a micro ATX, like, you know, the Odroid H2. I might end up doing that too. Uh, I'm jealous you got the Odroid H2. It's only 111 bucks, man. It is, to me, one of the 
one of the best bang for the buck computers I've gotten ever. Okay, this is going to be short. Can we talk about 817? Yeah, yeah, now here's a real reason I put that in the notes to remind me. Okay, I got a buddy that has basically a remote smart plug with a car remote type device. And he was wondering what kind of pranks he could do with it. Um, and so I wanted to throw that out there to the l- listeners now that I finally got the email fixed. And I'm going to first and foremost apologize to uh, people for the missed emails. Um, uh, 5150, uh, Jim, um, uh, Lyle, there's more than a couple emails in there that are just older emails, but I finally got the email fixed. It is in the notes. It's mini PC at podnuts.com. It is working. So if you have ideas how to use a smart plug with a car remote to prank people, send us in an email, but okay. These were five creative uses for smart plug links that I bookmarked. So the, uh, you know, I do the home automation. I, I kind of did the roll your own home automation with the smart plug outlet there to hook up to the Raspberry Pi. There's like a $10, 433 megahertz transmitter receiver pair. And so I found some budget and again, look, look at my YouTube channel, uh, Go to flyingrich.com, find my YouTube. There, There's a way to set it all up, and it was super cheap because some of these uh, home automation outlets are very expensive. Now, my wife and I, we're not coffee connoisseurs. We we drink Folgers Crystals. So if, if you want to tell us how awful our taste is, it, you're exactly right. So what we do is we have a water kettle, and believe it or not, a water kettle with a timer on it is like $100. So what we do with the water kettle is we fill it up at night, click the button that it'll go on, but the outlet I have programmed to go off at 5 p.m., meaning turning the power off at 5 p.m., and it turns on at 6 a.m., so that turns the water kettle on at 6 a.m. I also use this like my back was hurting me. I filled up the kettle, pushed the button, and on my way home, I just uh, VPNed into my home network and, you know, it sounds like it's more effort than it is and clicked it on. So when I got home, I had hot water in the kettle for the water bottle I was going to put on my back. Interesting. But yeah, I, I thought that's cool. Definitely smart outlets and being able, in other words, smart meaning having a timing when you can turn it on and off or being able to remote control them or to be able to chain events together is kind of a big deal. And one of the things I, I've been talking with the guys about, which you know, eventually it'll come out to you, the user, is, uh, let's see, uh, Brian and I both bought the smart outlet. And what I want to do with the smart outlet, I have it plugged into my, uh, it's no longer a data center in a drawer, it's a data center on a shelf. But my Odroid XU4, occasionally I need to reboot it. And what I wanted to do is have my Observium detect when it goes unresponsive and have the Observium make the call to the smart outlet strip and reboot the Odroid. That, that was my goal. So when you get to full automation where it's a closed loop, you know, some event happens that triggers the device to do something. That's, that's really when you're getting into home automation, not just a timer where it goes on and off. That is an awesome idea, Rich. I, I didn't even think about that. That's, that's phenomenal. I love that idea. Yeah, that's yeah, so- uh, True automation, like you said, uh, sensing whether a device is struggling and, hey, let's reboot this uh, random device and uh, taking it upon itself to do so and then check stability afterwards and see if everything actually was was corrected. Uh, I I, I think I'm going to have to do that myself and explore that. Yeah, I'm still in the figuring phase. Haven't got it all figured out yet. 
Yeah, uh, definitely let me know how you're making out. Yeah, I'm still trying to integrate that outlet strip into the uh, home automation controller. Uh, there, There is apparently a way to do it, and I just haven't had enough time on target to get it all working. I actually had this, uh, the strip hooked up to one of my uh, cable modems. And I was going to uh, actually set it up so if I needed to reboot the cable modem, I can I can do so. And then um, I actually stopped and thought to myself, okay, so if I rebooted my cable modem and my internet goes down, how is it going to know that I need to send it a signal to turn it back on again? Unless my internal devices are still active because it's not going out to the internet. So yeah, I think yeah, I should I think be okay with that. So, yeah, if you had a Raspberry Pi or, or something doing home automation uh, that you could say, hey, turn it off and then turn it on, you know, three minutes later or 60 seconds later, however you want to do it. I'm not sure if you can put a program on the device, on the power strip. You, I, check, check the documentation. I got you. Because if I remember correctly, I think you can program it for a time on and a time off. But I don't know that you can program it that if, hey, if I power it down, power it up in 60 seconds. Gotcha, gotcha. Very cool, guys. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not going to publish this tonight. I'm already tired. Um, Rich, if people want to catch up with you, what's the easiest way? I've only said it three times, flyingrich.com. There's a contact me page there. You can see all of my social media links and I am posting stuff about, you know, single board computing on my uh, YouTube channel. So there, there is tech geeky stuff up there. Very cool. And uh, Brian, what's the easiest way for people to uh, contact you? Hit me up over at um, minipc at podnuts.com, or you could uh, reach me over at Google Plus while it's still up and active. Ask the cable guy. Yeah, we got like, I think, two more months, a little bit over two more months for that. Um, all the uh, links and all er everything is in the notes. And again, we finally got the email working again, minipc at podnuts.com. Uh, so we'll be much more better about reading email. Um, I want to thank everyone for their support. Thank everyone for downloading. Uh, if you decide to buy a PineBook Pro or a Pine Tab or a Pine Phone or the camera or the gaming rig or any of the things, and you want to give us credit for it, do not hesitate to let the people over at Pine know that you heard about them on this show. Um, they seem like good people, and I just want to make sure that we uh, we push as many people to go buy good things as possible. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for all their support. Thank everyone for all, all the assistance and everything and all the downloads. And we will talk to everyone again real soon.